How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it is Monday here on this program, and you know what that means? We got a lot of news to get into here today. And, uh, man, we've got SmackDown, Rampage, Raw, Dynamite coming up this weekend. We've got the G1, which is uh, gearing up for three straight days of shows. we got the final day of block matches coming up tomorrow. And then we've got the semifinals today after the finals the day after that. And, of course, we'll be talking to Filthy Tom Lawler about the G1 today. We had Kevin Kelly on the show last night talking the G1 with Dave and I. So we're going to get into the lineups and all of that here today. We have got the full lineup for Raw coming up tonight. We have got a U.S. title match on Raw, as well as a Women's Tag Team Championship first round match and the return of Matt Riddle. We have updates on Drew McIntyre, injuries to Drew, injuries to Chris Statlander. We have got the lineup for the AEW six-man tag team title tournament. What matches are taking place when? And uh, we've got updates on Takeshita, GCW, and I'm not talking about my match with Tom, although I could talk about that with him later. And, of course, full reviews of SmackDown and Rampage this Friday night, including very, very good main event on SmackDown. We actually got a Gunter Shinsuke Nakamura Intercontinental Championship match with a finish, and they uh, they worked really hard. So we'll talk about that and so much more. If you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And we'll be back in a moment to kick the show off. Wrestling Observer Live. we got a lot to get into on the show today. This free program. And hey, are you a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com? I know some of you listening to this are not, and I don't know why. Yes, we give you free shows every day, but man, you got a, good, a lot of good stuff if you're a subscriber, including 13,000 archived shows. And one of those archived shows is last night's Wrestling Observer Radio with myself, Dave Meltzer, and Kevin Kelly, in which we spent almost 90 minutes talking about the G1, the G1 Climax Tournament 2022, which is wrapping up over the next couple of days. All three shows, August 16, 17, and 18 in Budokan. And tomorrow, August 16th, we've got Will Ospreay, Juice Robinson, Shingo Takagi, El Fantasmo, Goto versus Evil, Naito versus Zack Sabre Jr., Shii versus Sonata, Tamatanga versus Jay White, Jonah versus Bad Luck Fale, and Okada versus Lance Archer. Which, by the way, that is the main event of tomorrow night's show. So if you're trying to figure out, well, who go, who beats who to go where and what might it come down to, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, sometimes you can check out the match order and figure things out. But regardless, the 17th, we have got two semifinal matches, and then they will put together the rest of the card based on who wins and loses on the 16th. And then on the 18th, we've got the finals And another full card. So three straight days of G1 coming up in, uh, well, in about 24 hours or so, I would say. I'd have to look at my uh, U.S. to Japanese time clock thingamajigger that I've got. You got one of those, Mike? I do. Yeah, what time is in Japan right now? Uh, What, around 4.14 a.m., thank you. 4.14 4.14 a.m. in the morning, something like that. 4.14 a.m. 14 hours. 14 yes. hours. But anyway, if you want to hear uh, Kevin Kelly, Dave, and I talk about the G1, that's the uh, Wrestling Observer radio show last night. And I did you just get watch... words in on that show. I just watched Filthy Tom and Jeff Cobb right before this show went on the air. I've watched all the Filthy Tom matches in the G1. I'm, I'm scouting him. And, man, he got a win over Jeff Cobb. Whew. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a big win, brother. Nasty knee on the brain too, no doubt about it. it wasn't yeah, like he pinned he got some him. Small package victory, yeah, nothing like no, that. This no, this was he, not some he, flash no. pin or anything like that. Wow. Mm-mm. He manhandled that large, incredibly powerful man. What do you think he's going to do to you? 
with all this pent up frustration that he has with you talking about him because you know what you can smile on the show and everything can be okay because he's a professional well at least as, as much of a professional as he can be on that podcast but when he gets you in the ring all of those things you've said about him all of those things you've said about the team all of that stuff is going to come back beware brian alvarez billy starks may be taking home you in pieces Nope, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen, dude. They're all beat up. Even Kevin Kelly said, you know, the idea, the idea behind this thing with the four blocks and the extended tour and everything like that was, you know, it's not gonna be as brutal as having like, uh, you know, nine matches in twelve days or whatever. But man, you know, some of these guys they go days and days and days, and they got to go boom, 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 and everybody's beat up. He said, and I thought, yep everybody's yeah. beat up. But you know what else? Other people are beat up all around the world. Drew McIntyre, the next challenger to Universal Champion Roman Reigns, has been pulled off the weekend's live events in Salisbury, Maryland, and Atlantic City, New Jersey. A precautionary move due to lower back soreness. Fightful confirmed that McIntyre had been dealing with, quote, a rough back injury that requires additional rest. He is still expected to challenge Roman Reigns in the main event of next month's clash at the Castle in Cardiff, Wales. No surgery expected. And, of course, you know, he worked uh, He worked SmackDown, and then I think he's working again. Uh, I, actually, I don't know if he's on the show tonight, uh, but he will be on the show next Friday. And there's obviously travel days and everything like that. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know the status of his... Uh, of his back. I don't know, you know, what's going on. But I can tell you somebody who had a bad back for a long time, it doesn't matter. I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. I was better off not having matches with a bad back. But if you've still got to stand in that line at the airport and you've got to sit on that airplane and you've got to sit, in, especially when you're the size, like I'm a small guy, Drew McIntyre isn't. You're being crammed into this seat on this airplane and this travel's brutal. So, you know, being pulled off events, I mean, that's all fine, but you're still having to travel. You're in those cars, you're in those airplanes, you're standing around in the in the airport. An injury like that, you need, you know, I'm going to tell you a quick story. I was saying, before this? you do, e- even traveling first class, you Doesn't still matter. are hurting. Yeah, I mean, it's still, you, you're more comfortable in a way, but it still hurts. Your back hurts, it hurts. So uh, now now DJ here says, here's a secret about a bad back. It never gets better. Well, it depends. It depends on what the problem with your back is. For a lot of people, you're right. It never gets better. But depending on what the problem is, it can get better. But it depends on what the issue is. If you've got, like, you know, tightness in your lower back, if there's nothing, if there's no disc issues or anything like that, I mean, you can you can go in and get a lot of chiropractic and massage and, and rest, and eventually you're... Yeah. Sorry, your thanks. your back can heat, but it depends on what the issue is. If you there are certain issues where you're right, it doesn't matter. But uh, the thing, I once had uh, tendonitis in my elbow, and I had it for years, and I just there's nothing that that helped my tendonitis until finally I can't even remember. I think it was on the internet, and it was just some rando, some guy. He had, he he had had tendonitis, and he had advice if you have tendonitis, okay. And he's like, so that's when my- they dug up a guy that actually they they, they actually had a bunch of, of farmed out bodies that they would get stem cells from. And Brian's not going to no. tell you that part. No, they had listen. bodies. They mined for stem cells and they put them into Brian. This internet rando said, "I will tell you how to heal your tendonitis." And I, it's been like years. And I was like, "All right, buddy, let me hear what you got to say." This and uh, you're going to love this one, okay? It's actually like, like uh, you know, the old joke. The guy goes to the doctor and he goes, you know, uh, every time I, I, you know, do this or that, it, it hurts, Doc. What can I do? The doc says, well, stop doing that. And actually, this guy, this guy, he says, he said, I had this for years. And, and the only thing that cured my tendonitis is I had to literally stop doing every last single thing that caused any sort of pain. So... You don't lift anything. Like if you've got to, if you've got to lift your, you've got to start doing your dishes with your left hand. It's like nothing. If there's anything you do that hurts, it's just gonna hurt forever. And uh, so anyway, I I stopped doing to the best of my ability everything that hurt. And guess what? <laughs> that poor woman has not it healed you yet. That's what <laughs> it healed. So basically, 
So I'm going to take this as you just didn't stop doing everything that you did before. It's you had to relearn how to do certain things. Well, here's what it was. So okay, not here's what it was. Do more damage. So, so uh, uh, I, I, this is not medical advice, everybody. Listen, go to your doctor. I'm just telling you what happened to me. So it was my. It was uh, right here. My right by the elbow bone on my right arm. Okay, and what really bothered it was anytime I did anything that would be like a barbell curl, where your palm is up. Okay, when mm-hmm. any time I lifted or I did anything with my palm facing up in a curling motion, it it was brutal. And so I had to I had to do everything with my palm down. That meant if I were going to go to the gym, I had to curl with my palm down. That meant when I when I was holding my daughter, I couldn't hold my daughter with my hand like this. I had to turn my hand this way. I had to hold her like on my forearm with my palm down. So I had to do that for like a year. And finally, it all went away. But I had to redo the way that I did everything with that arm in order to actually rest that tendon. Because if you don't rest it, it's never going to heal. So to my point is... With Drew McIntyre, like, this guy's got to get some rest for his back. If it is something that doesn't need surgery, he needs rest for his back. And I don't know when he's going to get it because, you know, he's still traveling to all these events. He's still doing all these shows. He's still going to do Clash of the Castle. He's well, still going to have to work C-Town Salisbury. So that, that's and he's going to have a face-off with Roman Reigns too. and not have to take a bump? I mean, come on. Exactly. Well, I mean... Look, you can do a lot of things creatively and keep him on the show without having to do anything physical until the very end when you need it. Back in a moment, everybody. We have more news. Observer Live. Live. You know, someone's making a mockery of me here saying, you know, if you think less, your head will hurt less. Don't use your brain so much. You know what, though? I'd say at least 50% of the time I have a headache. If I just stopped thinking so much, it'd go away. Although, you know got other injuries so does that mean you're only thinking 50 percent of the time brian no 50 percent of the time the other is like i'm dehydrated not enough caffeine you know two days after confirming she Mm. suffered another knee injury chris statlander posted a workout video where she went into detail about the injuries and that she will need surgery the audio statlander said she quote suffered a completely torn acl and lateral meniscus and that the workout was designed to help her maintain as much strength as possible to lessen post operation atrophy no timeline for the surgery So the workout video was taken exactly a week after she suffered the injury, which was in her Friday, August 5th match against Sierra that was taped for AEW Dark. She landed awkwardly on her right leg after hitting a big boot and grabbed it afterwards. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see this this injury? I did. Mm. And it's, it's one of those things we talk about all the time. Like, every time people go into all of the injuries and, you know, AEW, and there's obviously a lot of injuries and WWE and... People start talking about everything from the schedule to the number of matches to this to that. Chris Statlander is not working that many matches, and she didn't do anything dangerous at all. She literally did a big boot. She put her foot on the ground, her knee buckled, and she fell down. And that was it. And things happen. And, you know, part of it may have been that she had a, a bad knee going in that had never fully healed. I don't know if it was the same knee, different knee. She'd had the in- a knee injury before, but things just happened, dude. Same thing happened with Santana. You know, Santana did a move. It wasn't even like a high-risk move. I, I don't want to say just go out and do any crazy thing that you want because you can get very badly injured when you do the real high-risk stuff. But I'd bet you anything if somebody went back and took every injury over the last three years, five years, and, like, how many of them were because of some high-risk, dangerous spot? And how many were people took a step? Or people did a normal, yeah. non-dangerous move? I mean, it would. I, I swear to you, the, the percentage of, of non-high-risk injuries, I mean, it's, it's probably got to be 95%, maybe even more. It's crazy how many people get hurt doing nothing as compared to the number of people that get hurt... Uh, Doing some crazy Sammy Guevara getting thrown off the top of the cell or this or that or whatever. So people crack jokes about Kevin Nash getting hurt walking into the ring, but it's like, you know, didn't Tom Brady drop back and Terry's Achilles? It's just one of those things where if it's your time, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You know, if there's no other 
you know, extenuating circumstances around and things just that's the way it goes. It's just been an awful time right now for the top talent in all of pro wrestling in America and not the, you know, especially AEW with the freakish things that have happened. And you can go, well, you know, CM Punk shouldn't have jumped into the crowd or whatever, whatever it is. It's just if it's going to happen, that's the way it's going to go down. So the best to her because she reinvents herself and then gets hurt. She's on the comeback trail, now gets hurt again. And it's just tough because they could use her. They could use her personality. And, you know, hopefully, again, just hopefully she can get back soon and be back at 100%. Yeah, the uh, people are talking about Kevin Nash and Vince McMahon. It, it's, uh, th- these are a little bit different because it's one thing, anybody, anybody, you put your, you plant your foot one way and your knee goes another way, and that's it for your, your ligament, okay? It's pretty yeah, hard to figure it. out how to Happen. tear your quad off the bone walking. And with Vince, <laughs> the Vince one was weird because the first but, quad, he tore the first quad. That was a, that was a uh, uh, you know, <laughs> concussion injury. I don't know if concussion is the right word, but he ran headlong into the side of the ring apron. And that's what ring, tore the yeah. first quad. But then he didn't want to sell it. And so he jumps to his feet and he tries For running with a torn quad, and then he tore the other quad. Impact injury, I guess you could call it. The first one was an impact injury. The second one was overcompensating for a. And then Nash was just, you know, he was walking and the, tore the quad off the bone. I mean, those are but, those know, are as you get older, weird true, injuries. But obviously, you know, with, with but not necessarily. I mean, yeah, to see it and happen in a wrestling ring or in that environment, yes. But as people get older, especially if they haven't taken great care of themselves and things like that, you know, we hear a lot about broken hips and things like that when it comes to older people. But weird things like that happen all the time with ligaments and tendons and, and all those sorts of things. Yeah, Triple H tore his quad. Like there have been there have been some quad injuries in professional wrestling. Well, do you notice the how many? Boy, same thing when it comes to football and baseball, too. I wonder if the number of quad injuries was higher at a certain period in point in time when guys were doing certain things. Because <laughs> you don't hear about quads as much. And maybe I'm, I'm, you know, but there was a time there where it's like there were a lot of guys tearing muscles off the bones and things like that who may have had arguably too much muscle on their frames. Got the uh, first round matches for the uh, Dynamite uh, six man tag team title tournament. Wednesday, August 17th, we've got Andrade, Dragon Lee, and Roosh versus the Young Bucks and a mystery partner. And uh, they're kind of doing the CM Punk thing where pretty much everybody knows it's going to be Kenny Omega, but they're not actually saying Kenny Omega. But it's pretty sure it's going to be Kenny Omega. Oh We've my got. God. Uh, what is this going to mean for Don Callis, Brian? What is this going to mean? Is he going to have to find another Canadian that he used to cavort with to yeah. maybe spend some time with? Because I can't see the Young Bucks and, and, and this man getting along. We have got Friday, August 19th, the Trust Busters versus the Best Friends. We have got Death Triangle versus Will Ospreay and Aussie Open on August 24th. And then uh, TBA, we have Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews versus the Dark Order. And yes, the finals will be at All Out. So they're getting this thing going on Dynamite and Rampage. And it's it's kind of funny. You know, I've made uh, I've made uh, comparisons between this six-man tournament and the WWE Women's Tag Team Title Tournament in the sense that there's there's a lot of similarities. It's kind of weird. There's their brackets, obviously. And uh, one side of the bracket is much stronger than the other side of the bracket in both cases. And in both cases, there's a team where you're wondering, why are they in this tournament? In AEW, you've got the Trust Busters. And in WWE, you've got Nikita uh, Lyons and Zoe Stark. Well, stop right there. Let me ask you, which one to you is uh, more awkward or, or unexplainable? Well, I'm gonna, I want to I say something about this. Okay, because I, I know because which I watched, one I believe. Well, I watch SmackDown, okay? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's there's this thing. People still have PTSD. They still hate WWE. They still get angry about things Vince used to do. And there's kind of, you know, Vince was so incompetent for so long. And the storytelling was so idiotic. And the stuff they did was so, that there kind of was this idea that they can do nothing right. But the fact of the matter is, when Vince was in charge, he did a lot of stuff wrong. 
But the idea that WWE did nothing right, that's you don't you don't become number one and stay number one and be way out in front by doing everything wrong, okay? And the reason I bring this up is because of these two promotions, one of them did, quite frankly, a very, very good video package explanation for one of the teams being in this tournament, and the other did not. So SmackDown, they had a video package and an interview with Nikita Lyons and Zoe Stark, and they explained who they were, where they were from, what their strengths were, why they were a great team, and why they were going to win this tournament. And they have not debuted in the tournament yet. They explained, we are the team from NXT. So I think uh, Nikita said something like, uh, Zoe has a, a, a gas tank that never runs out, and I'm a lot of woman. She had some line like that. She's she a big block engine, she is. They uh, So they did all of this and everything, and I was like, okay, fine. Like, if you've never watched NXT, now you know this is the NXT representatives. This is who they are. This is what they do. This is what makes each of them unique, etc. What did they do for the Trust Busters? Well, they threw up graphics. They threw up a bracket that said the Trust Busters were there. And then they had... A backstage segment where the Trust Busters set up matches for Rampage. But no, like, explanation or here's who we are or, you know, I got all this money and all of this and that. And then they do the matches on Friday, and Parker Boudreaux, the former Harlan, he wins a squash. And then Ari Daivari goes in and gets pinned by Orange Cassidy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, listen. I love AEW. I'm a big AEW fan. But, bro, WWE killed you in introducing this tag team into this tournament. They did a fine job explaining why Nikita Lyons and Zoe Stark are in the tournament. I am baffled still as to why. And then people are like, well, there has to be a team in there that's going to lose. I'm like, there's seven teams in there that are going to lose. It's a tournament. <laughs> They're all there to lose except the winners. You could put a good team in there. You could put the ass boys in there. But they... We, yeah. I don't want to go off on him because, like, I like Ari Daivari and, you know, Harlan looked fine it's in not the squash about them, and everything but like that's that. that's the thing. It's but not like, about them personally. It's about no. the scenario and the situation, and it's it's silly. It didn't make any sense. And then you go and have Daivari lose. It just – it didn't – It's sorry. It didn't do anything for me there. It, it doesn't really make any sense, especially when you have so many other people and so many other teams that people want to see – for them to get thrown into this. And there's a, I get why you want to have Parker Boudreaux like in a, in a high profile position or you want to showcase him in the same way that I think Nikita Lyons and uh, almost said Cora Jade, but they are being showcased to get a little taste, but WWE has the real estate and the time to do it. I don't believe that AEW does. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Um, Takeshita's gone. Didn't we just ask a couple days ago? How long is this guy around for? Yeah. And somebody goes, a year. Wrong. Uh -uh. He's already back to Japan. And uh, he'd like to come back. He said he was not interested in WWE. My next goal is more fights in AEW, I hope. He's going back August and September, but might be able to return in October. Then if I stay in the U.S., I can come to the U.K. more times. From Japan to the U.K. is so far, but from U.S. to the U.K. is maybe seven hours. It is possible. Which begs the question, what's his contract status with DDT? Like, Can he come over and sign and be an AEW regular? Because I'd be pretty cool with that. Mm, I don't know. If, if I'm DDT, uh, he and Tetsuya Endo, his generational rival, I am keeping deep claws into them and loaning them out when needed to AEW, but I'm going to want something in return because... I mean, they're stars. Look, everybody saw it here, what people have been seeing over there for a long time. And I hope guys like Endo come over here in his place and actually showcase themselves as well, too, because, I mean, these are great, great talents and they are very young guys. So, you know, again, the sky's the limits for these guys worldwide. So I, I would assume that they are locked down with DDT, but I guess we'll see. Raw tonight, we have got three things announced. The Bobby Lashley-AJ Styles match for the U.S. title, which they're claiming is a first-time ever match. Is that true? Bobby Lashley's never wrestled AJ Styles? I guess it's possible. I'm going to have to search this one. I don't know. 
Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Nikki Ash and Dewdrop in the Women's Tag Team Title Tournament first round. And Riddle returns for an interview. That's coming up tonight on Raw. And you know what you can take to the bank? Barring injury or illness, they're all going to happen. Because that bloke ain't shown up to rip the script up anymore. I'm going to repeat this until it is hammered in everyone's heads. How much better it is. And actually, I can actually do these previews now. Remember I used to do these previews on the show, and it was like, why bother? Because by the time the show rolled around, there was nothing that was advertised. Now I can actually preview the show, and it will actually happen on the show. It's crazy. I'll be damned. They have never faced off one-on-one in multi-person matches. It's happened four times, if you include the Royal Rumble. So the closest you've ever gotten has been the Royal Rumble. I love when they consider the Royal Rumble like a multi-person match. Well, Like, they may not even have been in the ring at the same time. He could have been eliminated before the other guy came in. Look, we're going through cage match here for ease and convenience, so that's why it comes up here. And I won't count, like, the Money in the Bank qualifying last chance gauntlet either, but that leaves the Elimination Chamber from earlier on this year as the closest we've ever come with all those other people in the match. That's as close as we've ever come to a one-on-one match with those two men. All right, a couple of notes from the two shows this weekend. We had Raquel and Aaliyah beating Shotzi and Zia Lee. So Aaliyah has moved on in this tournament with her partner, Raquel Rodriguez. And this match was fine. It was uh, it was fine. And then we had uh, Drew McIntyre coming out for a promo. And he talks about Karrion Cross attacking him. And then he starts talking about Roman Reigns with outcomes, Cross, and Scarlet. And I, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on here. They distracted him, allowing the Usos to jump Drew McIntyre. So are they in cahoots? No one knows. Okay, well, we'll follow up on that. So uh, this led to uh, a match later on, as we'll get to here. We had a video package for the Intercontinental title, and then we had Kofi attacking the Viking Raiders and destroying them with kendo sticks. But then uh, the Raiders made their own comeback, and they destroyed Kofi, and they splashed him off the guardrail, and he was left for dead. Nothing like starting a fight as a babyface and getting your ass handed to you. But that's what happened here. We had the return of Hit Row! As expected, with B Fab. They got B Fab back here. And they defeated Brandon Scott and Trevor Irving. And uh, they destroyed him, minute 38. And they did a promo afterwards. If you guys saw the, the original debut of uh, Hit Row, I think they just replayed it because it was basically exactly the same thing. They did the promo, they talked about who they were, uh, they showed people dancing to their music. And uh, yeah, they're back. But what does this we're, mean? We're going to see most, how this goes. For most wanted treasures, what does this mean? Will AJ Francis be back as the host of that show? You know what's funny about this? <laughs> he has Top Dalla comes out. Go ahead. Top Dalla comes out. <laughs> and uh, by the way, uh, I think there was an interview with them, and they, they said that they were like on the top of the list when Hunter came back. And uh, he goes, <laughs> he said... Uh, I don't you know, love his I, confidence. <laughs> Holy crap, I wish I, I, I just he shows, I just don't take anybody's <laughs> crap, he says. I, he I stand up for myself. And he says, uh, he says, Hunter said, I never heard about any of this, so you start, you start with a clean slate. Okay, great. He's starting with a clean slate. Let's hope it stays clean, okay? <laughs> but anyway, uh, Top Dollar comes out for this match, and he's got an A.J. Francis shirt on, which I guess it makes sense. In, well, it doesn't make sense because... Uh, you know, they were out doing stuff, and Hunter apparently had called him and said, how fast can you be ready for TV? And they were like, we'll be there this week. So I guess, you know, he'd been, he was going to wrestle as A.J. Francis because he couldn't be top dollar. And so he just wore his indie gear on the show. Like, you threw out all of your top dollar stuff? <laughs> apparently he did. Well, maybe he's, I don't know. I don't know. I just, again, I always like Stokely Hathaway after he left WWE, did that, uh, he was doing the one man show thing or doing a stand up thing. It's like, remember, this was the guy that started a fight with the young bucks over sneakers. So it could, we'll see how That's it goes. Right, yeah. But, uh, that dude is a, look, he's a, he's a magnet. 
whether for good or bad, that man's a magnet. He's a personality. Now, whether that can be harnessed and made to be a good professional wrestler in a professional working environment as much as it can be, we'll see. But he is, if nothing else, a, a, dis- a distinct and lively personality. We had a Ronda Rousey segment where she came through the crowd. She's like Steve Austin now, and she's got a bag full of money because she got fined, and she drops all this cash on the table because I guess she doesn't have a card. And uh, the security comes out to get her out of the building, and she beats up one of the security guards, but then she decides she's going to leave. So she's leaving, and she comes across Shayna Baszler's coming down to the ring, and Baszler's telling her, we, we don't do it like this. you got to just like follow the rules. You'll get what you want if you follow the rules. And Ronda says... You used to be a killer. And she walks off. And so there's going to be a contract signing with Liv Morgan and Shayna. Liv Morgan comes out. She's still got her giant brace on her arm. But apparently she's cleared. And uh, she gets in the ring. And there were there were some light, you tapped out chants. But she was not like, they weren't treating her like she was a full-on heel or anything like that. And then, uh, of course, she gets attacked. Baszler beats her up, stomps on the bad leg. But then after all that, after all that, Liv bounces off the ropes, gives her the bulldog, puts her through a table. I was this was like this was like Vince McMahon booking here. Like, dude, no one thinks that Shane has any chance of beating Liv. You got to give her something, and you give her a little, but then you lay her out at the end of the segment. I guess I got a few weeks before the show, but my God. Well, then we had uh, Drew McIntyre versus the Usos. He commanded, or he demanded a match with them, and for a while it was uh, one on two. He's getting beaten up, and then Madcap runs down. Who, by the way, with Triple H in charge, is still Madcap, even though the seventy-six-year-old guy who's the last guy on this planet to use the term Madcap gave him the stupid name. He should be Madman Moss. No, if, you're gonna have, if you have to have Mad in the name, it's better to be Madman Moss and Madcap. Why can't it just be Riddick Moss? Why give it should him a be Riddick or Moss? Whatever? Just just Riddick Moss. That's fine. It, doesn't that sound you know? I don't say if it came up in the lab in NXT, you know, beats the hell out of JD McDonough. You know what I'm saying? So they had a uh, match. Madcap runs down, and they went for the one uh, D, but one of the Usos got pulled out of the ring. McIntyre then hit Jimmy with the Claymore, pinned him. They actually beat the Usos, and then uh, he goes to give Jay the Claymore, but Sami Zayn takes the bullet because he still wants to be that honorary Us, and so he's he's dead. We had Los Lotharios hitting on Maxine Dupree, and she looked like she was interested. Which you know, Triple That's H is a way not to the get one. To a tag match. <laughs> Triple H is not the one that put her with maximum male models. So I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he split her off to manage them and had Max Dupree manage maximum male models, but I guess we'll find out what they do. And then the main event was uh, Gunther and Shinsuke Nakamura for the uh, Intercontinental title. They had a very good match, and it was more a uh, Valter versus Nakamura match than a Gunther versus Nakamura match. They did a lot of things they would not have done with Vince there. It literally opens with Shinsuke giving him so many leg kicks that he kicks his legs out from under him, which, you know, Nakamura did leg kicks and that sort of thing when, when Vince was around. But, I mean, this was, this was you know, I'm going to chop you, chop you, chop you until you collapse. And then he goes to work on, on uh, the arm, and then Gunther's trying to use the arm throughout the match, but his arm hurts. He tries to go for this, but his hand. I mean, they had a very good psychological hard-hitting match. And then finally, uh, Gunther Which, how Everything you said, how much him. sense does everything you say make where it's just like, this should have never been into question. It should never be into question. Shouldn't that be the story of a Nakamura and a, and a Gunther? Would be him chopping him well, down? Well, it should. And that's but they what... like they like to do idiot-proof matches for these fans. Like, oh, you know, don't work two body parts. They'll get confused. Just work one. Well, he worked several here. And they had a great match, and uh, Nakamura got power bombed and pinned, so Gunther retained the title. And uh, overall, good SmackDown. Good show. Yeah. It actually then, was. Yep, Rampage had a Daniel Bryan, uh, Bryan Danielson interview, setting up his match with uh, Garcia on Wednesday. We had Sammy Guevara and Ty Mello versus Dante Martin and Sky Blue. Which, of course, uh, Ty hit the Ty KO to win. So they are still the AAA World Mixed Tag Team Champions. 
If you're wondering what in God's name is going on, don't worry about it. Just watch the wrestling. Let me ask you a yes, question. Mike. Do you think now could be the opportunity? We've heard TV 14s. We've heard this stuff. We've heard that stuff. But you saw moves in that match, even though the women and men had to wrestle aside from each other. We saw a DDT, I believe it was, from Ty uh, on, and, and all that sort of stuff. Could we be seeing that more in WWE? Would you want to see that more in WWE? I don't think you see it, but what they'll do is they'll do the same thing that they did here, which is men have spot. to wrestle men, women have to wrestle women, but it's okay for the women to do a spot to a man, but not Fair vice enough. versa. That's nice. that's the way they're probably going to do it. Uh, Parker Boudreaux beat Sonny Kiss in a squash match. He looked all right, but it was like a minute. And then the Gun Club, not in the trios title tournament, they defeated Redbeard, Eric Redbeard, and Danhausen. Poor Danhausen. I mean, someday he'll get a win. But he goes in there. They destroy him the entire break. He makes a hot tag. He tags back in. He gets pinned. Oh, my God. Do that right. Answer. When he gets that win, oh, my God, it's going to be incredible. A singles then win the main event. Danhausen. Hmm. Then the main event was uh, Orange Cassidy and Ari Daivari. And uh, the match was good. Ari, Ari Daivari is a very good wrestler, and Orange Cassidy is a very good wrestler, and they had a very good wrestling match. And, you know, if you don't care that they're in the tournament or you don't need them to have any credibility, that was all good. But I was watching and thinking, how are they going to beat Orange Cassidy? Because Ari daivari has got to get a win. He's in this tournament. But, no, he was beaten in the middle of the ring with the orange punch. And uh, there you go. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. Well, it's noted Raw is tonight, everybody. And then we've got uh, NXT 2.0 coming up on Tuesday. AW Dynamite on Wednesday. And, man, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. What's going on with this All Out show? What's our What's our actual lineup for All Out right now? Should we find out? Show's yes. uh, less than three weeks away. Hmm. All Out. AEW. 2022. Let's see what the official the official card is right now. All right. Uh, I'm no saying matches. at least two matches. No matches. No None. matches. We got the oh. final. We got the finals for the AW World Trios title. That's the only match that is official for the show right now. There have been matches teased. There have been people who have requested matches, but at this point, that's the only official match. We don't even know what's going on with like. CM Punk and Moxley, presumably they're wrestling, but I guess we'll probably find out a lot more on Wednesday. And mm. uh, yeah, that's not good. Look, this when thing New, going. New Japan does this, and they because they have to because we have to treat these results as if they're sport, which is not a good idea to do in America. Period. Anyway, but there's their excuse. There is no excuse for what's been going on. I know CM Punk's been out. We know he's back now and everything, but, like, they should have been a lot more on the ball with this stuff. But we talked about ROH on the shows, all this other stuff. Maybe they have new eyes, new calm beginning this week. We'll see. Well, that's it for today, everybody. I want to thank you for listening. I'll be back later on this afternoon, 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern, with Filthy Tom Lawler talking G1, New Japan Strong, SmackDown. He went to a stardom show. A lot to get into today. That's only for subscribers. Video.f4wonline.com or WrestlingObserver.com for the audio. And I'll be back tomorrow with Mike here for more Wrestling Observer Radio tonight with Dave. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.